and you can kind of do like a nice little Freddy Krueger thing. Hello, Maggie. So <laughs> <laughs> I've cooked for friends, I've cooked for family members, I've cooked for coworkers, but I've also surrounded myself with yes men, a bunch of lying patsies who tell me my food is good when I know they are fibbing. So today I will be taking on my greatest challenge yet by cooking for a real life food critic. Everybody welcome Jen Harris. Hey. Woo! Hi. Hi. So Jen, you are a food critic. You, you get paid to criticize people. Yes, I, I'm actually a columnist critic. So okay. I don't write reviews, but I write best of lists. Gotcha, but I mean, you've, you've eaten some of like the best food across LA and thus the world, in my opinion. Yeah, I've eaten all over the world, actually. So, and I, and I get to write about it. That's incredible. Yeah. Do you think that I can make you a three course progressive tasting menu that is gonna blow you away on par with some of the best restaurants? Absolutely not. Yeah, no, me neither. It's an uphill <laughs> battle for sure. And to make it even more difficult, I've chosen one item from the 7-Eleven that will be the star of today's meal. Are you ready to see what the main ingredient of today's dinner will be? Yes. Slim Jim! I went Iron Chef on it. How do you feel about Slim Jims? They are gas station fuel for your body. I mean, they're not even my first choice at the gas, they're actually far down from my first choice. I guess if you need something high protein with like a pleasant uh, peppery bite, you could do worse than a Slim Jim, so. Jen, do you have any faith in me today? I want to have faith in you because I know I'm going to consume Thank the you. things that you're making. Uh, so I have a little bit of faith in you. This is gonna be a team effort then, let's do this thing. Okay. Get cooking. I'm Jen Harris. I'm a food columnist, video producer, and video host for the Los Angeles Times. How's the snap? First, it's just salty, like extremely salty. There's a snap, it's chewy. It just reminds me of just what I imagine a dog treat, like a meaty, like a meaty dog treat to taste like. A little rubbery. Not, not my fave. First course up, uh, Jen Harris loves fried chicken. She hosts a really great show on LA Times Food YouTube channel called The Bucket List where she literally reviews fried chicken. She's one of the foremost fried chicken experts in a metro area of 14-ish million people. Don't Google that. How many people in LA, 14? That seems like a lot. In my estimation, Slim Jim is somewhat similar to this Northern Thai sausage called Sai Ua, and there's also an incredible Thai dish called Angel Wings where you debone a chicken wing and then you stuff it with other meats and glass noodles. We're taking inspiration from that, but we're gonna use Slim Jim. So first step, you gotta debone some chicken wings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut through the skin here. I'm gonna expose the joint. Maggie, get close. Yeah, there you go. And then you're just gonna expose the crack in that joint. Then you're gonna run your knife between it to separate the drum from the flat. And then we just, this is for lunchy tomorrow. Where do I put it? Yes, thank you. All right, and then how to debone a chicken wing, what you're gonna wanna do is take the knife very carefully and you gotta expose the tendons here and cut through the tendons around the bone. It's gonna take me a second. I should probably just do it like this. I'm not good at the grandma cut though, you know? Grandmas will always be like holding the tomato and just like talking to you with their knife blade like this and it's like so close to their thumb and they never cut it. The magic of grandmothers. The idea is to create uh, a meat sleeve that we're gonna stuff with more meat. So now you're gonna kind of take two fingers and run it into the meat. Yeah, and then you see the bones being exposed out there. There you go. Josh exposed bone share. I like it. So now you gotta push the meat sleeve away from the bone. There you go. And then you're gonna expose the two bones right here. Make sure to keep that skin flat. You see it? Hello. <laughs> Make it like that one. Hey, I don't know if I break these bones, it'll be easier. There it is. And then, yeah, hold on. Let's get the little guy out first. And just, come on, get out, get out. Now the big boy, twist and out. And if you see, you got the beautiful floppy chicken wing meat sleeve right here. And you can kind of do like a nice little Freddy Krueger thing. Hello, Maggie. So, <laughs> if you can see, we have like a, a lot already done. Thank you to everybody who did that. Nicole Trevor Viewer is the best. All right, so now we're gonna make our filling. Uh, we are going to make, I don't know, I'm gonna call it like a bootleg. I should have chopped the Slim Jims before I touched the raw meat with my hands. Sheesh. So I'm gonna <laughs> toss some meats in there. And now we're gonna take some Slim Jims. We're gonna snap into them. They don't snap as well as the commercials would say. False advertising a little bit. I'm gonna chop these up. Again, Slim Jim, very incredibly spiced little dried sausage meat stick. This is American charcuterie at its finest. So I'm gonna use this Slim Jim to sort of like spice up and season the rest of this chicken sausage. It's gonna marry with all that fried crispy skin on the chicken. There you go. Beautiful, love this. We want the Slim Jim to really shine here. And now we gotta add some aromatics, some other flavoring agents. We're going with palm sugar in there. It's gonna be nice, just kind of give it that little bit of sweetness to sort of balance all the spicy meats. 
I dropped a garlic, that's fine. There's enough spice in the Slim Jim. We got some white pepper. We got just a little bit of fish sauce. It's gonna bring that umami, bring that funk. We got coriander. I studied abroad in England for a semester. They say coriander there. I didn't, I lied. Then we have woodier fungus. Uh, it's a really fantastic type of mushroom that's very common in a lot of like Vietnamese spring rolls, uh, a lot of Chinese food. We're gonna add a little bit of fresh jalapeno just for heat. That's lovely. And then some scallion too. Blending scallions, man. It's a big pastime in the mythical kitchen. You know, we're sitting here on our lunch break, blending scallions. God dang it. Too much. There's a lot of stuff. There's, 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 there's a lot of stuff here. And now trying to figure out how to work a very simple machine. Nailed it. That's good luck. And then what you're gonna wanna do, some people would say uh, pulse it, but instead I'm gonna kind of Give it a Jimmy. No. Now it should be nice and blendy. I want a nice smooth meat paste to shove into my meat sleeves. I want a nice smooth meat paste to shove into my meat sleeves. Gave you an alt on that one. Meat paste is done. Now what I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash my hands. Yeah, I'm gonna wash my hands. So, we're gonna take this meat, we're gonna put it into a piping bag, and then we're gonna shove that into our deboned chicken wings, and then we're just gonna fill her up. Do a little potato starch on the outside of it. Right, there we go. Gonna mash it more. There it is. There it is. And now, kinda you wanna get the air pockets out. So what do they call this, Trevor? Burping your bag? Yeah, it's called burping your bag, where you mash out the air pockets. That way you get a nice even filling. I feel that bag has been considerably burped. Now we're just gonna kinda Put a little hole in there, and then Maggie, you wanna see the meat come to the tip? Oh, too small. There it is. So, and, hey, save this for lunch. Now, take our deboned meat sleeves, shove Maggie. This is a cooking show. And then we're just gonna fill her up. You can feel the tensile strength of the meat. You see that? It's nice, right? Maggie, say it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. All right, so I'm just gonna fill these up, and then we're gonna drop them into the fryer and plate it up. My initial thought when I was invited to Mythical Kitchen is that it was some sort of joke. <laughs> is that someone was going to ask me to eat something insane, most likely deep fried. I think Josh is always creative. So uh, I am expecting uh, three courses with Slim Jims, obviously, but I think if anything, I will be entertained. All right, Jen, for our first course today, we were inspired by Thai angel wings. So we have here, we've deboned chicken wings. Uh, we have stuffed it with a sausage made from the chicken wing meat, as well as Slim Jim, some woodier mushroom, a little bit of fish sauce. There we have a fish sauce and lime aioli, pickled shallots, micro cilantro and lime. I recommend dipping it, constructing a bite with pickles, lime, whatever you want. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you, we're, we're <laughs> impressed not, with ourselves. This is not what I expected for the, for, it, like in terms of plating, it looks very good. Thank you, you're the fried chicken queen, we had to. I'm gonna do a bite first with nothing on it, just, to, just to see. You taste in the Slim Jim? No. Interesting, there's a lot. It was about equal parts Slim Jim and chicken meat. Wow, especially with the texture too. It's like kind of soft and like velvety, so you don't mm -hmm. get any of that like chewy Slim Jim. Yeah, we, we pureed it, it to try and reduce the chew. Yeah, so far, so far so good. Uh, and then it's also yeah. been pureed into the aioli itself. Oh my gosh, this is, this is the most Slim Jim I will ever have in my <laughs> life. What are we feeling? I'm dying right now. <laughs> It's hilarious. <laughs> this is good because you're getting all those like, I don't know if you just masked it with like the really good fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. It tastes like, is there lemongrass in here? Yeah, there's okay. lemongrass blended into the actual sausage itself. Yeah, because you get like the nice, bright, like vibrant lemongrass and like smooth chicken. And it is extremely salty, like mm. not in a way that's like off-putting, but I'm not getting literally any Slim Jim. Well, my thought was Slim Jim kind of reminds me of Sai Ua, the, the Northern yeah. Thai sausage. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, incredibly salty. And so we're like, you know, get the lime in there, get the fresh herbs, kind of play with that. I mean, I'm impressed with you right now. She's cleaning the wings. I'm, I'm gonna eat this wing. Heck Good yeah. Job. Good job. We're going three for three today. Wow. Well, <laughs> having to pin down the most amazing meal I've ever had is making me sweaty. Um, but if I had to choose, it would probably be this fried chicken that I have on my uh, phone screen. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it is from Willie Mays restaurant in New Orleans. 
and I went and it took about two hours of waiting in line. It was like 95 degrees outside and it was, it was the best fried chicken I'd ever had. Juicy and perfectly seasoned and the seasoning was like super like feathery light, but like this like supernal crunch. It was, it was so amazing and I was addicted to it and I probably finished my food in like 18 minutes and then I immediately went outside and got back in line again and did it all over again. Main course, we started off nice and fried kind of bar food and now we're going a little bit more elegant. We are going a whole salt baked fish here. You might wonder, Josh, there ain't no salt and there ain't no damn fish on the table. Uh, we're gonna rub it with a Slim Jim curry paste, which to my knowledge, never existed in the history of the world. Slim Jim curry paste, if we get a Google, that's big. We go for first. We go for first in this kitchen uh, at all costs no matter what happens. So we're dropping some Slim Jims in here. My thought is that Slim Jim's nice and spicy and then it has a lot of really pungent flavors. So we're gonna counter it with even more pungent flavors. Sometimes you fight fire with water. Sometimes you got a controlled burn with fire to stop fires, fighting fire with fire. Huh? It's a little bit of, I took a class on wildfires cause welcome to college in California. They just do that. Wildfires travel faster uphill than downhill. Uh, yeah, I got a C minus, I pretty much ruled. So we're adding shallots, cilantro stems, which are a really fantastic ingredient. Cilantro stems, a lot of people discard them or they go use them for stock and just eat them. They're good. Palm heel strike, a couple cloves of garlic. Sometimes I think the palm heel strike isn't the best method. No, no, every day they will test you. Every day you must resist. Every day people send you photos of their hands bleeding from doing it. You must not stop. All right, peel some gar- <laughs> Tactile dexterity is waning. We're adding a little bit of coriander. A little bit of fresh ground, fresh ground, a little bit of fresh ground, a little bit of fresh ground cumin in there. And then we're adding some shrimp paste right here. This is, oh, it smells like the krill oil pills I take to keep my joints lubed up, but in a really good way. <laughs> yeah, I'm now at the age where I take krill oil. What? Sue me, I'm aging gracefully. And then we're taking a uh, galangal. Galangal is like Ginger's cousin, a little bit more aromatic funk to it, a little bit less of that brightness, but that's what you want in this. And then we're gonna take some lime juice. Yes, that's lovely. Look at that. And the worms of Gordon Ramsay, good. And now we're gonna take some soaked dried red Thai chilies here. We're gonna add a lot. I want this spicy, right? I want this to like mimic that flavor punch, that macho man Randy Savage punch of Slim Jim because he was their uh, spokesperson for a while. Which, what a, what a pairing. What a pairing. It's almost like a Nick Swordson and Barks root beer. That is real, dude. Nick Swordson did all the early commercials for Barks and he just did a bunch of like weird man on the street stuff. It was cool. Barks has bites, so does Nick Swartzen. There you go, now it's gonna blend this up and then we're gonna get our whole red snapper. We're gonna rub it down, we're gonna cake it in salt. You'll see, it's gonna rule. Now it's about the time where we gotta stuff this fish's belly with the curry paste, rub it all over and pack it in salt. So, we're gonna open up this beautiful red snapper. See, it's got its nice little gills removed. And then we're gonna serve the fish whole. Yeah, just kind of spread that inside there, really cake in some of that curry paste. This is gonna provide so much aromatic flavor running throughout that. And then that's gonna get like encased by the salt. So the salt we have blended with Slim Jims to absorb some of that fat. And then we put egg whites in there. And the proteins of the egg whites are actually gonna create a crust. Yeah, I get some curry paste in the eyeball. In case she wants the fish cheek, that's the best part of the fish. And so the egg whites are gonna create a sort of crust that you're gonna be able to crack the salt open. We're gonna try and do it table side, which <laughs> table side presentations on this show tend to go great. All right, I'll take some of that salt. Just gonna lay out a nice bed right there. Go a little bit more. There we go, there we go. Beautiful, and then the salt is gonna season the fish perfectly. See if that's long enough. Take this little guy, flip it, yeah. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. Now curry paste the other side, and then some people would remove the skin. I don't wanna, might remove the skin table side and then eat it in front of her to establish dominance. <laughs> Just slurping down soggy fish skin. <laughs> You know, look like Paul Dano and the Riddler. I feel like he'd eat fish skin. I don't know why I said that. I've never seen it. What does he do? Would that be on brand for Paul Dano as a Riddler? Gollum. Gollum. That's another good superhero. All right, there we go. All kicked in curry paste. And then now we're just going to completely cover our beautiful boy with salt. It's a good fishy. You all ever seen Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo? It's fishy, fishy, fishy. I'm gonna use all of it, can't take it with you. There we go. And then we wanna kinda create a little carapace here. Yes, protect the fish. It's also gonna insulate it. So the fish is effectively steaming within the salt. Mm. Got our fish fully covered in salt. We're gonna pop this in the oven, take it out, crack it open. I think food is so special to me because it reminds me of my family and what we do together as a family. So when I was little, it was 
Both my grandmas, my Chinese grandma and my Jewish grandma, both cooked a lot. My mom's a great cook, uh, so we were always cooking, having family dinners together. And when we weren't eating at home, you know, my entire family is into food, so we were going out and trying new restaurants. One weekend it was, hey, let's go try that new place in Little Ethiopia, or hey, let's go, to, let's drive to Orange County and get Vietnamese food. I just come from a family of really adventurous uh, eaters who like to spend time and money on food and, and create fun family experiences that way, so I think that's why it's so important to me. Smile, don't make too much eye contact. Thank you. <laughs> make enough. All right, Jen, what we have today, this is a table side presentation. This is a whole salt baked snapper. Now we have blended Slim Jims in with the salt and the egg white to sort of perfume it. And we've uh, made a Slim Jim curry paste with plenty of uh, galangal in there. Well, May I? Yes, please. Oh, the service at this establishment it. is uh, top notch. If you heard me yelling at them and berating them, that's just how they get motivated. There we go. And then I'm just gonna brush away some of the, God dang it, Josh, get it together. I'm just gonna brush away some of the excess salt. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, uh, shall I remove the skin? Yes, please. Okay. Or you know what, H however you would like me to experience it is how I should eat it. It's up to, the, I'm deferring skin to the Skin stays. Chef. All right, we'll eat, we'll eat the skin. Okay. Oh, I fudged it, I fudged it. <laughs> Great. And then, uh, the idea, there's a bone, what, what, yeah, I was watch the say. bone. That's lucky at this restaurant, that's lucky. Thank you. We have a little bit of the curry paste that we just cooked down with some rice wine vinegar, then mm -hmm. a salad with a fresh sliced Slim Jim in it, a little bit of cilantro, Thai chili, peanut fish sauce, and then uh, jalapeno and lime. Any questions? <laughs> there's a lot going on here. Thank you. Uh, no, it's, you know, I have the good luck bone, so I think I'm in good shape now. <laughs> nothing bad can happen no, with the good no, luck bone. Nothing bad can happen now. Okay, let's just, um, Two, well, two good luck bones is actually bad luck, but if you find a third gen, it's all about the odd numbers. So, chef, yes. I should eat this all in one bite, or how should I? No, uh, like Cheesecake two, factory lettuce wrap style, or what? What I would recommend is sort of crushing it into your palm and then kind of just facing it. Kind of like a face maneuver. There it is. Okay. Hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. well, wait, no, that's three? That's three. That's good luck, sorry. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we almost killed you, that's bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Four's, four's back to bad luck. <laughs> no! So was that release I signed in we case should, I died? We should have practiced filleting the fish better mm. other than that. Mm. <laughs> I can't make it up, five, okay. Other than that though, Jen. There's not actually a ton of flavor on the fish. Aww. I mean, I know you did the salt crust, but underneath, you know, I didn't actually eat the salt crust. Am I supposed mm. to eat the salt crust? We can bring back the whole salt crust if you think it would make it better. Uh, there's just no other discernible taste other than salt. That's probably the this. Slim Jim coming into play, because Pro it's probably. the main ingredient in most of it. And then you have it here, fresh, sliced. Yeah. That was a choice that we made. Have you taken a bite of the salad? No, the Slim Jim? no I'll, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll get in There's here. There's a little bit of fish sauce, lime, and palm sugar, hopefully to temper the Slim Jim. Yeah, okay. I see you have some crushed nuts, which was a nice touch. Thanks. <laughs> That's rough, Josh. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, hey, one for two ain't bad. This dish is overwhelming and underwhelming at the same time. But then if they average out, you're just whelmed. I wouldn't order it again, but it, you know what? It was a valiant effort. I, was it really, Jen? I, it's, it's, it's hurting me. Yeah, it's, it's hurting I'm sorry, me. I'll take it away. It's this is unacceptable. Right if I were to create a first course with a Slim Jim, I feel like I would try to make it into some sort of salad and pair it with some fresh ingredients and some greens um, and maybe a slightly sweeter vinaigrette that would kind of offset all the salt that's in the meat and probably turn it into like bacon bits where you would just kind of have like a little bit so you'd have like a salty bite and, and probably make them crispy too. It's not about the size of the banana. It's about how long you deep fry it. I'm about to deep fry some bananas. We're making banana spring rolls. These are called Saba bananas. They're very small, popular throughout Southeast Asia. They're delicious. We're gonna pair that with, and I gotta eat the banana because I did a stupid joke. We're making a Slim Jim fat caramel here. We got some Slim Jims toasting, getting nice and aromatic. In the pan, we're gonna add some butter. Add some butter. Dang it. Well, hey, while that butter melts, let me sell you on our podcast. Have you heard of podcast? Nicole and I have one, it's called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We have a really fantastic episode where we ask the question, are nachos a salad? Of course they're not. We also use the phrase analingus for the first time in our podcast. It was good. The <laughs> podcast or? Check it out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, it's on all of them. All right, so we're gonna get that butter melting. I'm gonna try and perfume all that Slim Jim fat, get the spices bloom and we add some sugar to it. In the meantime, let me peel some little bananas. 
This is a little banana, and this is a, there's a very specific technique to how you peel a ban saw a banana. There it is. And then we're gonna do that to a couple of them. Got all butter in there, we're gonna add some brown sugar. Just a brick. I'm gonna mash it with a mash it with one of these. We're not trying to get like full caramelization on it. There you go. It's a very forgiving way to make caramel. For those of you who were come here for cooking tips, why? But if you want to make a kind of bootleg caramel at home, instead of actually like dealing with bringing sugar up to a caramelizing temperature, just use brown sugar and then add like butter and cream to it. And then the sugar's just gonna kind of melt a little bit and you get those caramelly notes to the molasses. Real bootleg way to do it. Also add Slim Jim fat. Is the camera still on? You're seeing all this? Now we're gonna add some cream to this caramel. Keep it on the heat. I like to keep it on the heat when I add my creams. And then it's gonna kind of emulsify that cream in there. And then you wanna shut it off the heat. And then I use, yeah, I, I overuse the word emulsify if we're being honest, you know. Emulsify just means like do. And then we're gonna strain this. Caramel's looking lovely. Because I want some of the Slim Jim fat solids that we're gonna add to this here little spring roll. And then I'm just gonna take those, I'm gonna add some to our little spring rolls here. Oh, do I need water for the spring rolls? Mm. I'm gonna take a little base of palm sugar, just kind of sweeten the insides a little bit. And then I'm gonna take some of these Slim Jim solids that have been stewing in that caramel. I think it's gonna give it a nice little meaty bite. I think of like maple bacon donuts, you know? Kind of same thing, yeah, ish. Right, come on guys. All right, and then now I'm gonna take our water. We're simply gonna wet all sides of this. Pat, 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 pat. Pow! There we go. And then, kind of roll this up like such, like such, and like such. And then as such, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over. And then, just give it a nice little seal. Kind of do one of those. And beautiful, now we're just gonna fry these off, serve them with our caramel, and uh, get the praise of the paper of record of Los Angeles. I think the future of restaurants in LA is exciting. There are chefs coming here from all over the world to do their thing. I think LA is a city where there are no rules when it comes to food and cooking and where you can have a restaurant and what kind of food you're doing. It's just a really, really exciting place to eat. And the diners here are the best too. We're super open to trying new things and we love to eat. So I think LA is the best food city in the world. All right, Jen, for a dessert, we wanted to end simply here. This is a, a play on Filipino turon. We have bananas that have been wrapped with a little bit of palm sugar and then what I can only call Slim Jim caramel solids. And then there's a spork because I'm a narcissist. Oh my God, yeah. okay. I'm so curious about this. Me too. About this Slim Jim fat. Did you try it? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know. You know what's funny is that when I first tried it, it just tasted kind of like a salty caramel, mm -hmm. kind of like a bacon caramel yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> but then there is a distinct Slim Jim aftertaste that like mm. creeps up and then like hugs your tongue. Well, that's all the Slim Jim spice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, that's aggressive. The bananas in the egg roll wrapper should temper it. And again, there is fresh Slim Jim meats inside. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering what the meats are. The meats are hugging the banana. That is not good. <laughs> I don't know if it's the texture of the banana being very hard. Like the mm -hmm. banana is like raw almost. Yeah, we were hoping it would steam. Oh yeah. Hoping mm -hmm. doesn't steam the bananas no. though, Jen. And then there's just like Slim Jim bits in here. Yeah, that was a late addition to the recipe where we were like, is she gonna be mad if there's not meat in her dessert? And we thought you would be. You know, I, I, I would have been upset at not incorporating it more, just because I feel like the other courses, mm. you definitely uh, incorporated it. Okay, I'm gonna taste another one. Maybe the banana won't be so raw, and I'm gonna dip it in the... Mm, that one looks like it's gonna be more raw. Oh, the really? Other one. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dip in the caramel. What happened here? Uh, well, that's just the Slim Jim meats, but well, you know what, no, no, do the second one, do the second one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that one's messed up. <laughs> oh, they're all, yeah, they're all, it's okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go over the third one. What if I told you that the alternate idea to this was to do a cheese course? and we were gonna make a Slim Jim Jam. Cause then we call it Jim Jam. <laughs> you know what? That might've actually worked. Well, okay. Come back for a redemption round. Oh. Excuse my table manners. Mmm, so raw. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what, honestly, the first one, go back to the first one. You know, I don't think I need to take it. I think I got it. You know, I don't think All I need right. to take another bite. The texture is not good and the flavor is just like super bitter. What about the sound? <laughs> okay, you know what, it's fried well. Thank you. There was a, there's a good crunch to it. And beyond the really offensive Slim Jim aftertaste, this is a nicely made caramel that's a good texture. I'll take that. There you you go. know, you gotta take the good with the bad. Jen, if you were to write a review <laughs> of our restaurant, Ooh. how would it read? Would it be good or bad? It would be inconsistent. Fair. Because your first course was so stellar. Mm -hmm. that, I was so surprised by that, like how you were able to transform Slim Jims into something that, where you didn't just mask it, it actually kind of helped mm -hmm. enhance the dish. And then it just really went downhill from there and I almost died, so. Do you think if we switched the order of the courses and served the chicken wings for dessert, you would have been happier? I think I would have left. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> we got her through three courses though. That's big for us. There you go. Uh, Jen, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for not pulling any punches and giving me an honest review. You're very welcome, thanks. Appreciate it, and thank you all so much for stopping by The Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, wherever you find your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram and TikTok at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your dishes under hashtag dreams become food. Jen, where can the people find you? At Jen underscore Harris underscore on all the social channels and latimes.com slash food. Heck yeah, follow her or else. <laughs> or else. We like to threaten our fans. Or else he'll serve you that fish I just ate. Burn! Hey you, cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.